nice one. So this week we are joined by the Reverend John McClure for Reverend and the Makers. Hello, Derek. Thanks, thanks very much for taking time out your your busy schedule, which I wow. can't imagine is very busy at the moment. I mean, not so busy schedule. Yeah, everything's uh, everything's been cancelled, mate. You know, so a prolonged period of being in house. I think it's a bit of a nightmare. Eh? Yeah, it is, mate. And I, obviously, like I, I suffer bad with my anxiety, so. At first, I've been in a right tangle, but <clears throat> pardon me, I'm getting my head round it now. You know, mate, we've got to we've got to pull together, and I kind of like feel like we should just try and project some positive vibes because there's so many people being like doomy and dramatic and hysterical, and I get it's scary for people, but I think people almost wind each other up. You know what I mean? Totally, totally agree. And it, I mean, it, for, for your musician's point of view, it must be, you know, initially when you first hear about this and all the cancellations, you're your first thought is, oh my God, what am I going to do for money? And this is my livelihood. But ultimately, as long as you can get them rescheduled and the safety of the public, is probably the main thing at the moment. Well, my main thing for me is my dad's mum and dad went to Tenerife on holiday. My dad got pneumonia. So we were in hospital for three weeks. Then he got quarantined in his hotel after that because of corona. So we've only just got him home. So yesterday I drove up to their house and I'm on the street talking to him and my mum. And they're hanging out oh, upstairs. Winter, I've seen eh? that on your Twitter. I've seen that on your Twitter. Unbelievable, mate. So I think like it's uh, scary even for their generation because they've never known anything like it. Um, but listen, all I've really got to offer people is music. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to do a few nice videos, like shout arts, play people their favourite songs and that kind of thing. And then I'm going to do a live kind of face Facebook live stream gig on Sunday night and just try and project a bit of positivity because, listen, this thing ain't going to last forever, mate. You know what I mean? And I think um, we're going to remember these times. And I think, in a way, you're going to think this is a bit mad, but we've been very divided, haven't we? You know, like, totally. like totally. Brexit and Scottish referendum thing and one thing and another, the Trump thing, the environmental issues, all this. Society has been very, very divided, I think, kind of last five, ten years especially. Um, and in some ways, I think maybe this period the way we're all suffering, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, does it, black or white, you know what I mean? Whatever your religion is, whatever, wherever you come from, whatever your political views are, left or right, you, you, you're susceptible to this corona thing, right? So I think in some ways it might bring people together, and I don't think that's that's maybe like one good thing that's coming out of it, I think, maybe. Ah, you'd, you'd like to hope so. You'd like to hope so. I, I think you're right that there's been a lot of division over the last while, and that rightly or wrongly, you know what I mean? It's quite important that people stand up for what they believe in, and you've been a, an advocate of that, John, you know what I mean? You've been on all the news stations in the world and on BBC Brecht and whatever, obviously back in Corbyn in the last uh, election. I, I can't blame you for that. I think if I was living down your way, I'd be doing the exact same. Yeah, definitely, mate. Definitely, but... It comes at quite an heavy price, that, because I've turned, although it's got me a lot of kind of supporters and stuff, it's got a lot of people against me. You know really? I mean? because, because, you know, a lot of my fan base, they're not necessarily middle class kind of people who agree with me, they're working class people. And a lot of them, they, they might be Tommy Robinson fans or Boris Johnson fans or Tory voters. So I've, I've copped a lot of grief for it. You know what I mean? But I think. This sounds a bit woolly and a bit hippy, and I don't mean it to, but but there's a bigger thing than all of them things, isn't there? That's like a shared humanity. Totally. You know what I mean? And, and, and like, you only have to look at kind of Second World War, I guess, where people, there were a kind of, the, the war cabinet were consisted of the Liberals, the, the Labour Party and the Tories. And for, for a brief period, people put them divisions to one side and, and it's for that reason I'm quite loath to like make any political capital out of this corona thing. I, I don't think Boris Johnson's a, a particularly nice fella, and I'm not a big fan of his, but he's got a difficult job, right? And I'm loath to kind of give him any any shit for it because I think, you know, he's, I wouldn't like to have his job at minute. Do you right. know what I mean? I don't like the fella, don't be wrong, and I think he's a I think he's a knobhead, truth be said, but. <laughs> I'm loath. I'm loath to criticise him really because I think they've got very difficult jobs at minute world leaders, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? And it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent a time where, as you said, everyone should be pulling together and, and doing what's best for the country, shouldn't it? Or doing what's best for the world rather than your individual countries as well. Yeah. You'd like, to, you'd like to hope that we follow the lead of others that have maybe started self-isolating and, and some of the 
I mean, being a musician yourself, and obviously I, I enjoy music as well, seeing some of the scenes for Italy and Spain when people are playing out in the balconies and trying beautiful, to have... Beautiful, man. Beautiful. It's amazing, eh? Yeah, I mean, I'd do it myself, but I just don't want every fucking knowing where I live around here, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, I think, like, I think they, 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 I mean, that, that Italian stuff. You see that one where they were that last and she's singing opera from Balcony? Absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Unbelievable, man. But, I mean, fucking, some of our neighbours, honestly, mate, they're like a cat's choir if they started around here. It's because... funny, I, I was talking to, uh, to my girlfriend about that, and I was saying, see some of the folk were singing out the flats in Glasgow, and the folk would be turning the the fuck up, wouldn't they? But they wouldn't have been enjoying it the slightest. Oh, I do love Glasgow, mate. It's uh, it's a proper city, that is, I tell you. And I do, I, I do think you probably you probably see best of people, you know, and... There's been bits of humour, like, we, we've got a big family, or I'm related to Arthur Sheffield, right? And we've got a family WhatsApp, and um, we've been having, like, a nightly quiz, right? Me and me, my oldest auntie, who's, like, 83, she's on it, and Don't we're you? having this quiz, and, like, just fucking funny, you know what I mean? Some answers people are getting and all this stuff. Like, one of, one of my cousins, she lives in Italy, actually. She lives in northern Italy. Hey, but she's like, she's cousin, there just now, is she? Yeah, man, but she's yeah. like, she's getting on for 60, my cousin. Anyway, one of the questions I put, I said, it used to be a statue, Top uh, Fargate, which is a shopping centre in Sheffield. I said, oh, a statue off. My cousin put fucking Napoleon. I'm thinking, fuck. <laughs> so we've no, like, so been having all this, all this banter and that, and like, been trying to keep my dad's spirits up because he's been stuck in hospital, right? And he's gone a bit miserable because he's, he's had this pneumonia. So I says to him, yeah, listen, dad, I said, uh, You'd be all right, man. I said, you know, I said, it's not forever ish. You're going to be fine. And my dad says, well, oh, I'm fucking miserable. I said, Dad, I said, Nelson Mandela did 27 years in Nick. I said, you've only done three weeks. <laughs> anyway, he went, Nelson Mandela weren't fucking banged up with your mother. So, <laughs> listen, you know what I mean? These, these that, that's the humour that keeps you going, though, isn't it? That's the humour that keeps you above board. Listen, I'm quick, to, I'm quick to slay Britain, right? And the, the foreign policy and the. the the racism and one thing and another. I'm quick to stick the boot in, but one thing we are very good at on this island, right, is humour. We're, totally. we're the fucking world's best at it, and I include the Scottish especially. You know, we're fucking funny bastards, aren't we? Right, and I think totally. There's a lot of that coming through. My brother does this, uh, he does this Sunday League football thing where, like, it's like a spoof Sunday League football team, right? Our manager and his assistant, <laughs> they call it Steve Bracknell. <laughs> Follow it on Twitter, it's fucking right. hilarious. Anyway, we've done a new sketch for that where, like, I have to ring him up. I tell him leagues cancelled all fixtures. And uh, he's, all, <laughs> he's all this. And he's, he, we're facing a disciplinary because he's, like, chinned a referee, right? But he's, he's like, fucking Corona's come at a good time. It's got me off with a disciplinary and all this. <laughs> but we've been, you know, so we've been making bits of, bits of, like, bits of comedy, bits of music. I've been working with University of Sheffield on... Uh, Artificial intelligence, so we've got some algorithms that make really? music. So Excellent. yeah, there's lots, there's lots to be getting on with. You know, it's just uh, I've just got to hope my missus don't kill me in process because that, that, that's fucking... half the problem, isn't it? When you're around the house and getting in, in people's bed, I'm difficult to live with, me, Derek. You know what I mean? <laughs> As you probably noticed, I talk a lot. And she come back from shop today, and she looked like she was just ready to crack up, my missus. And I says, I'll go and have a bath. I said, I'll leave you for to have an hour on your own. Right. So yeah, it's gonna. I mean, I saw this thing recently. Says in China, right? Divorce right. rates are soaring. So I reckon because you get you've got these couples, haven't you? They probably see each other like a few hours a week. You know what I mean? Aye, exactly, exactly. I'm so used to being out at work all day. Your partner's out at work all day. Then well, you see each other. Like, well, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? And <laughs> why you're in my? You know what I mean? So there's gonna Aye. be there's gonna totally. be some testing times, Ed. You know what I mean? Totally. But so what, we'll be all right, mate. We'll be all right. And I think, like, we've got a bit of a, like, a, a posh shed in our, our yard, right? Right. My missus is posh. She likes to call it a coach house. I call it a shed because I okay. don't want to appear to have betrayed my working class roots, right? It, dep it depends what you keep in it, if it's a shed or a coach house. Well, there's fuck all in it a minute. But <laughs> anyway, yesterday, because when this cancelled school, she's gone down there, my wife, Laura, and she's, she's turned it into, like, a little school and a nursery. It looks unbelievable, so... There's two kids are dead excited about that line, so... Yeah, Brilliant. it's all right, mate. What about yourself? What are you going to be doing? I'm just keeping busy, just keeping busy, work, working from home, trying to do as many podcasts as possible. I mean, for me, like, obviously, first time having you on, John, but we usually do these podcasts in person, so when we found out with the self-isolate, I was like, oh, God, I need to try and 
get people on the phone or on Skype. And because I mean, as, as much as it's good for for me to talk to people as well, you also want to give people something to listen to as well, don't you? And well, that's it, mate. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I quite I like don't... watching people on Skype, though. I think there's something quite charming about that. Totally, and, and, and there's only so much Netflix you can watch in the world. There's so many books that you can read, isn't there? Oh, listen, when, when Skype first came out, my mother couldn't get her head round it, right? She, she thought it was like a miracle, you know what I mean? That you could talk. Right. And she used to like, she'd be like doing shit like this, like, can you tell what that is? I'm like, <laughs> it's an onion. Yeah, it's an onion. Like, you know she doesn't really like it's a camera. Oh, she can't get up. She still can't get up a FaceTime. She thinks it's amazing. That's but brilliant. she's... Uh, She's been crying today because she's been FaceTiming our little and he's only two. Oh. I think, like, not being able to, like, physically put her arms around him is starting to mess with her head a bit, eh? That's it. And that, I think that's where the challenges come in as well, isn't it? You know, if these kids aren't at school and they're, they're maybe frontline workers and they're away out and you're not seeing them and people are having to stay away for their, their old relatives, it's heartbreaking. It's totally heartbreaking. Yeah, well, all my family are nurses. And, I mean, my mum and dad were both nurses. My brother works in hospital. A lot of my cousins are nurses. Uh, and it just makes you realise, doesn't it, times like this, they're fucking heroes, aren't they? They really are, oh, you know. We're so, we're so lucky to have NHS, aren't we? You know what I mean? And, absolutely, absolutely. And hopefully you know, it's a lot longer. Yeah, they do, they do wonders, mate. So I just think, like, do you know what I do think as well is, and I, although I'm anxious about this thing, I think, like, there's an expediency, there's a, there's a need to solve this corona thing. And... I've got faith that science will prevail, actually. I think I've got great faith in scientists. You know, when you, you look back in history and you think, oh, there were a, there were a, there were a race to develop... I know it's physics rather than chemistry, but a need to develop the atom bomb or there were a need to, to produce more jet fighters than Germany were producing in war or, you know, there were a need to solve this particular problem. And, you know, you've got some of the best minds in the world now working on this, right? Yep. So, what I hope is that it'll bring people together, number one. It'll provide a real boon to scientists. And also, maybe, you know, maybe there'll be some great creativity because I've had this kind of thought recently that we're very distracted by this kind of, like, low-level stimulus we've all got in this life, social media and mobile phones, and it might enable people to focus on their own creativity a bit more, you know, across all mediums, film and, and music and, and art and poetry and whatever it be, man. You know, I think... Hopefully, we'll see a bit of a cut because I think I feel like we've, we've it's become a bit stale culturally lately. You know what I mean? Oh, and I think oh. I think this might provide the kind of fresh impetus and writing material and and stuff like that. You know, exactly. Hopefully, you'll get a lot of people that aren't out on tour that will take this time to you know, get behind closed doors and get the guitar out or get the keyboard out and actually start writing some tunes as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's. Uh, I mean, I just keep thinking about like comedy characters and all. I think like. What's Delboy? What's fucking Delboy doing? Like while uh, <laughs> what's him and Rodney doing in, in isolation? Uh, you know what I mean? Like and see that that's where ideas come from and grow arms and legs. And before you know it, you've got a new ep- well, never know, you might have a new episode. Well, listen, my mum and dad in isolation is fucking hilarious in itself. So my, my auntie's been before they got back from Tenerife. She's got them like fucking this massive like river of lager, this bottle after uh-huh. bottle of lager, uh-huh. right? My mum's fucking swabbing everything that comes through the door down. Like, <laughs> you know Quite what I mean? Right. Even Quite though nobody's right. coming up at fucking doorstep, she's sanitizing. Yeah, she's still everything. swabbing it. No, it's and, unbelievable. I mean, even that, I think that's a sitcom in itself. You know what I mean? Seeing them both hanging out at window talking. They look oh. like, they look like Queen and fucking Duke of Edinburgh. So that, <laughs> that one, like. That's amazing. So let's talk about a bit of the band. Uh, John, yeah. that's all right. You, yeah, you were just out on tour there. How was it? We had a tour last year, the best of. And then we're meant to be heading out on a tour later on this year. We, uh, the, we've got uh, us, us headlining and then uh, the Future Eds and Ho- Holloways are also playing the support. Oh, uh, but, I mean, whether that's going to happen, mate, is anybody's guess. Because, I mean, even if we clear corona-wise by then, who's, nobody's got any fucking money, have they? Uh, well, that's, that's you know what I mean? So, I think a, a lot of it's gone gone tits up, mate. So, might be a bit of a weird year, but what was that's it? all right. What was it like getting back on the road last year to do all the, the old classics, so to speak? Oh, I loved it, mate. Loved it, you know. And, and weirdly, Bam's doing better than he's ever done. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it went proper tits up for Revenant Makers. And we got down to, like, 300 in Manchester, right? Played yeah. to 3,000 not last tour. You know what I mean? So it's come back strong, and I feel dead proud of that because 
We were never biggest. We were never fucking you two to start off. We were never biggest band. You know what I mean? But you had a proper good following there as well. See when that first album came out, John, it was absolutely brilliant, and it's boomed for there. And the see you getting back to that level again is brilliant. Yeah, because no lie, like you know, drugs and one thing and another, personal relationships. It fell off edge of a cliff, really. Second yeah. album, and it took us took us a long time to to get it back together. But yeah, we've got a, a bit of a different lineup now. There's only like me, Ed, and Laura, who are original members. Other two are kind of been drafted in. Joe, we're in Milburn, and his drummer Ryan, we're in a band called This Girl. And since we got them in the last five six years, it's just gone like strength to strength. And I think part of that's to do with playing festivals, right, and that ability to turn up to people who maybe have heard heavyweight or don't really know your music. Yeah. And by end, you've got them jumping up and down like nutters, you know what I mean? And totally. we've turned into... I mean, years ago, I used to be like, being a political sermon, right? <laughs> X, Y, and Z. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? No war in Iraq, all this shit. Aye. And for whatever reason, it's come back. And I think we've made it a bit of a party rather than getting too heavy. There's obviously that deeper content if you listen to the lyrics... But yeah, we just give people a good time, mate, and and I think like it's a bit old fashioned, that isn't it? Just being good live, it's it don't really happen. Oh, amazing, it. amazing, and I think what's unique about yourselves and nowadays, uh, now nowadays, you know, is you, you do come to life on stage and you, you interact. And a lot of bands now, in my opinion, you know, they don't have a stage presence. They don't have that engagement with the crowd. It's almost don't get me wrong, their tunes are brilliant, but they, yeah. they don't turn it into this is about everyone here rather than just us. Well, it should be an experience, right? And I think, like, there's bands who I love, but I go and watch them live and I'm bored shitless, eh? They're just standing there and I'm thinking, come on, eh? Do something. Aye. And it's it's boring, whereas, yeah, we make them have it, mate. And I think, like, that's how you've got to be. You've got to you've got to smash it in, smash into them, haven't you? And make them... And that bouncing thing, I think other thing is there's something about the tempo of our music that's around that kind of 130 BPM mark. It makes people want to dance. I don't know what it is. It's something... Something definitely intrinsic to the tempo of our music, um, and yeah, there's, listen, there's bands who've sold like twenty million times more records than us, and they, we kind of like they go past us, they go down past us, and we seem to stay safe or even go up a bit, and goes from strength to strength really. And I feel like we'll be the only ones left, mate, after the Corona <laughs> and the war, and we're like cockroaches. Ed is just us right. still there turning it out, you know what I mean? Do you, know, do you know what I absolutely loved about it? I was watching the videos for the last tour, and it was after the shows yourself outside in the streets with the crowd around you, you know, you're sitting in top of a, a car, or you're, sitting, you're standing in the middle of the road and singing the songs, and the, the crowd are singing them back to you, and it's not just your own songs, it's covers as well, and it's almost right, there's the curfew finishes at half 10, 11, but we're keeping this party going. Yeah, and I think, like, I've always wanted to do that thing where I stand in the street because I think to myself, I just want to set up fans. I don't think I'm some big rock star. I'm just a, like an ordinary geezer, so I'm going to come and stand in the street next to you and, like, we can be together and, and that sort of lack of ego and and stuff. Because, you know, I've got a few pals in the music industry who, like, have themselves on that the fucking David Bowie or something. You know what I mean? And I think, like, <laughs> all right, come down off a tree now, mate. You know what I mean? Like, get, totally. get with it. I think like the days of trying to have that sort of rock star mystique is utter nonsense. It's a it's a 20th century construct that if you want me to be philosophical about it, it's like it's it's done me. You know what I mean? Yeah. The idea that you can be aloof and like so I'm not into it. It's not for me, mate. You know what I mean? I, I think you've got to be like almost go over way and be like hyper real. Do you know uh, what I mean? It's I funny like, you say that though because I mean over the years you guys have been almost pretty close to what you would say is the, is the last of the rock stars. Like, obviously, you, you've done, you've done the club nights, you had Manny and Primal Scream and the Rosies. And, mm. and did you not, could be wrong in this, but I'm sure I saw you as well. Was it Oasis these last two? Yeah, yeah. We, you yeah. know, we've, we've supported everybody, man. Monkeys, yeah. Ian Brown, Stone Roses, Verve, Chili yeah. Peppers. Um, and that's, that's how you would say, in my opinion, are the last of the rock stars, you know, these people that... Now, nowadays, you don't get people coming out like that, do you? No, and I think it's good. I think that's a good thing. I think there's people who yearn for things to be how they used to be. That's what almost like inhibits culture. You know what I mean? I think this AI thing is enormously exciting because it like has this sort of potential to sort of democratise music. And obviously musicians feel very threatened by that because they're in, into the idea of wearing a leather jacket and being really famous. <laughs> but I kind of quite like the idea of destroying the music industry. I think it needs to be destroyed in some ways. It's it's yeah. old art, you know what I mean? We need to find new ways of doing things. And and my way of doing things is to, is to lean on me kind of humanity and try and just connect with people in that respect. But 
I've never, I, I've kind of try and push, push forward really. And that's why I'm doing this AI thing. And a lot of jur journalists might think we're that thing. We think we're a lad band, even though Laura's been in band since start. Or they might think we're indie land Phil. And I don't, I don't pay them no mind. I just do my own thing, push forward in my own way. And I think that's, all the all best bands in my mind have never conformed to any trends or fashions. They just sort of exist in their own time and space. You know what I mean? 100%. And that's kind of what I think, really. And I think the days of the the rock star, you know, all that sunglasses indoors nonsense. It's come on, mate. It's coming to an end. Uh, you know what I mean, everything. This is days of social media <laughs> where everybody knows everything about everyone all the time. Uh, you know what I mean? So, so why would you try and? conform to some like 1970s bollocks and you know? I, I i think that that speaks loudly about yourself as well john because you know you're saying obviously you were out talking on about corbin and talking about politics and you're saying you know it might not agree with everyone that, that listens to my tunes or listens to my music but you know why would you change why would you change who you are for that um, well a lot of them do mate and they do it because they're careerists you know what i mean and i think when they look back they might regret it in time mm. to come you know Iraq war, when it started, you know, we went and were, were kind of part of killing a million people in that war. Hardly anybody had anything to say. Austerity, no one had anything at all to say about that. And I just think it's a great shame, really, because you, you're given a platform and you're given a voice, and if you don't choose to use it, what's what's 10 million quid worth? Right. You know what I mean? Can't take it with you, mate. Totally. You know what I mean? And I think, like, what's have all your money and all your fame. I'd rather have half at fame and have my dignity. You know what <laughs> I mean? Or, or not even half at fame, a, a hundredth of the fame, a hundredth of the money. <laughs> I've got my dignity and my honesty and, and I've got songs that I think mean things in people's hearts on a deeper level. Do, do you, you think know? a lot of that comes back to being brought up in, you know, that working class Sheffield part of the country? Because I, I think, you know, folk from Sheffield, you know, they're, they're from this kind of, post-industrial background, you know, and there have always been the type of people that look out for each other and put an arm on each other's shoulder. And... Yeah, to some degree, although there's artists from Sheffield who, who, who don't act and behave in that way, mm. but it's certainly been part of my value stream. You know, I was brought up by nurses who kind of... My, my parents, you know, were brought up in an environment of extreme poverty. Yeah. Um, and, and in that respect, kind of... We were always taught, particularly to kind of hate the Tories, but also that socialism and sharing and caring about other people were the thing to do. Yep. And, and and to me, that's cool. It's cool to care about people. It's cool Aye. to care about the world around you. And for that reason, that's why I identified very strongly with Jeremy Corbyn. And I was very proud that the, the old Jeremy Corbyn chant started when I got him on stage and he said on stage at one time that I, I changed the face of the 2017 election, which, you know... That like, must, give you, an, that must oh, give you an enormous sense of pride, you know? Like. Unbelievable, mate. Unbelievable, yeah. you know? And, and I think, like, a lot of people see the Corbyn movement as the, like, death rattle of 70s socialism, but it's not. And in, in the same way with the Bernie Sanders thing in America, it's the birth pangs of something else. Yeah. You know, and the leaders of this, it might be... Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez or someone like that. It'll be ideally maybe someone young and female who, who carries this thing forward, right? But yeah. it's the birth spasms of another movement, I think, because you've seen it now with Corona, right? What are we seeing? What's what's the response of governments? It's socialism. <laughs> you it's know, socialism. I, it's terrible that it takes a, a world crisis to get to that point, isn't it? Oh, hang about, should we all band together and find a collective solution? <laughs> well, isn't that funny? Because I thought the market was going to do that. Uh, you know what I mean? 100%. And I think, I think um, this thing may expose the weaknesses in the American system and all that. And I think, listen, we'll have our day, mate. We'll have our day. And there's something enormously satisfied about being consistent in your belief system, right? And in who yeah, you yeah. are as a person. And if it takes 30 years for that to come to fruition, you know, I'm about having a career. And, and as Richard Orley, a fellow Sheffield musician, said to me recently, better bronze forever than gold for a week, kid. Brilliant. You know what I mean? brilliant. You're a big Wednesday fan as well, aren't you? I am, mate. Although as, as fucking chairman's an absolute knobhead, I've got to say. Really? Who is it, who is it that's in there now? He's a, a fella called Des von Chancery. Right. Who uh, is the son of the man who owns John West Tuna. Oh, right, OK. 
and uh, it's, it's proof enough that being the son of a rich businessman does not qualify you to be uh, a businessman yourself. You know, and it, I think I don't think he's an evil guy, but I think he's very poorly advised. He knows nothing about football, and he's got us into a lot of trouble financially. And we, we were facing until recently a, a points deduction, although God knows what's going to happen with that in like a, uh, the current kind of situation. But yeah, he's a he's a right tip, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still get along? Yeah, I go. I go. I'm a season ticket holder, and I go and I try and get to away matches and all that. Uh, but it's not been so good last couple of years. We've been on a sort of listen. This is this is like you know maybe the, I don't know the fifteenth biggest club in the land, right? Yeah. And maybe you could be in kind the twelfth biggest club, something like that. And we've not been in Premiership since like eighteen years, something like that. You've got you've got lads and lasses now who are twenty three, twenty four years old. They can't remember has ever been any good. Yeah. You know it's what I mean? Crazy, so, isn't it? It's crazy. We, we deserve better, mate. You know, because I was fortunate enough to see that great team we. With David Hurst and Chris Waddle and kind of John Sheridan and, and latterly kind of Paolo Di Canio and Carboni and all them. And we've just been watching some right dog shit every three years, you know what I mean? Some yeah. proper shit, man. Uh, so I'm I suppose hoping... the younger generation's coming through as well. They'll, they'll never believe that was a, a thing, you know. It's... Well, my big lad, I've been teching him, he's only five. I've got him an half season ticket this year. Right. He, keeps like, he keeps like, Daddy, I like Liverpool. Man. Oh, come on. Come on. Right. Like that, huh? Well, this is bearing in mind my dad's side of the family at Everton. My big dad said to me, he likes Liverpool. So I says to my wife, what's, what's crap with Al I'm like, why is he fucking wanting to like Liverpool all the time? She went, John, he likes goals. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it's got, eh? Yeah, he's not going to see that down your way. No, it's been, uh, it's been grim and... And obviously, there's that kind of hangover we are stadium that the stand where the Hillsborough disaster happened is largely unchanged to this day. You know, and it's just a bit of a we need a we, we need, and it, it's made worse by the fact that across the city, Sheffield United are flying right, the fifth in league. Absolutely. They've got a, they've got a manager who's from Sheffield who appears to all intents and purposes to be like a young Alex Ferguson. It's just it's it's, it's so depressing. And how does how how is that down there? Because is the rivalry quite bitter or is it? I'd imagine there's a lot of people that are family members that are the other side of the divide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not obviously kind of sectarian in the same way that Rangers and Celtic has been historically, but we fucking hate them, you know, and there's been a lot of violence and trouble of it years. Uh, we definitely, it's quite, I would say it's one of the most fierce rivalries in the land. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just so depressing to see them flying the way they are, you know what I mean? And You, you don't wish them any, any good... Good wishes at all. It's... Listen, if we were in Prem, and they were, one, we could have that thing. But now, mate, I wish them. I'd fucking <laughs> be doing the editing, and, and they obviously love to rub salt in wounds. And of course, oh, it's it's so depressing, mate. You know what I mean? But what are you going to do? They're, they're doing it. They're flying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you imagine you imagine being a socialist Sheffield Wednesday fan at the minute. Fucking <laughs> Boris Johnson's in, and Sheffield the United in fifth in league. <laughs> it's tragic, mate. Honestly, it really is. Uh, what, what's the positives in your life just now, John? <laughs> <laughs> um, the positives are that I'm blessed to be creative for a living, which is amazing. I work with my wife, who's beautiful, and she's ama an amazing person. And obviously, my kids, uh, two little boys, are absolute angels. I've got a great family, an extended family in Sheffield. Uh, and I'd like to think Reverend and Makers fans are good people, man. I've got a closeness to them that I don't think a lot of bands have, you know what I mean? 100%. So I've got that, and I think um, living in the love of the common people, mate. You know what I mean? I've, I've got like I, I like to think I've got a good rapport with like ordinary people. Uh, 100%. And I, and I feel like I'm connected to ordinary people in a way that a lot of musicians aren't. You know, I'm blessed. I can walk down the street and I get like, nah, hey, John. And I mean, I've just been at yeah. shop earlier, and a young lad come up to me, 16, he must have been, just come out of school. He's like, have me photo with your pal. Didn't bother me, had his photo, left me alone and walking down. Uh, uh, you know, like Rocky when he's running down the road. And he's <laughs> down, they're all like, hey, Rock. That's Mr. How Sheffield, I, Mr. Sheffield. That's how I feel in Sheffield, mate. I just get fewer love <laughs> off people, eh? And, uh, yeah, that must be quite a buzz as well, man, because it, it, you you's obviously come out, what, 15 years ago, you're maybe, out, maybe more than that. And, yeah, and now yeah. you see that kids are buying into it again. and they're It's wonderful, mate. It's yeah. wonderful, you know what I mean? And, like... 
<laughs> Hello, darling. I'm just doing a, a podcast, so don't you come on, because we don't want you coming on here. <laughs> Both in Liverpool kits, these two, mate. It's heartbreaking. No chance. So many yeah. more Salah. Yeah, they've, they've both got Salah on back of the shirts, actually. It's sickening me, honestly. I'm disappointed in you. Disappointed. Uh, should, be, you should be, I don't know, should it be Stephen Fletcher or something, shouldn't it? But you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, go that far. Well, yeah, this is it, mate. But yeah, no, listen, I'm blessed, pal. You know what I mean? Because, you know, when you grow up in Sheffield, I grew up in 80s, right, which were a period of intense industrial decline, as it were, in Glasgow, you know. Yeah. And And you never think you're going to do what I've done, right? And and I still do it. And I think I might do it for a foreseeable future. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I, I fucking, I'm a very lucky man, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and like, yeah, long may it continue, pal. And the fact that people like want to listen to me. I'm to, I've been talking to you for going on an hour now and the fact <laughs> people want to listen to what I've got to say. Listen, you know thanks I mean? very much, John. And, and honestly, once this all, uh, once we see you, it's a bit more bright on the other side. I'm sure we'll, we'll see you up in Scotland and uh, we'll continue to chat again. I should look forward to that, mate. But listen, awesome. keep positive, mate. We're going to come through this and everything's going to be all right, mate. Top, man. Thank you so much for your time, John. All right, Derek. Take all care, the mate. Cheers, awesome, man. Thanks. Man.